I hadn't been back to the cabin in years. After Dad died, no one had the heart to visit the place anymore. But this summer, something made me feel like I needed to go, like I needed to reconnect with those old memories. It was a last-minute decision, but I packed a bag and drove up, planning to spend the weekend there alone. The cabin was just as I remembered, wooden, small, tucked away in the woods by the lake. The air was thick with the smell of pine and earth. I unlocked the door, and it creaked open, letting out the musty smell of a place that hadn't been used in a long time. Dust covered everything, and cobwebs hung from the beams. I spent the afternoon cleaning, sweeping out the dust and airing out the rooms. By evening, it felt livable again. I made myself a simple dinner, then decided to take a walk down to the lake. The sun was setting, casting a golden glow over the water. It was peaceful, but there was a strange feeling in the air, like I wasn't completely alone. Back at the cabin, night fell quickly. The silence was overwhelming, broken only by the occasional hoot of an owl or rustle of leaves. I decided to read for a bit, using an old oil lamp for light. Around midnight I heard it, a faint, rhythmic thumping sound coming from outside. At first, I tried to ignore it, but it grew louder, more urgent. I went to the window, peering into the darkness, but saw nothing. The moon was out, casting eerie shadows across the yard. I grabbed a flashlight and carefully stepped outside. The sound was clearer now, coming from the direction of the shed. I approached slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. The shed door was slightly open, swaying gently with the wind. I pushed it open and shone the flashlight inside. There, in the beam of light, I saw the source of the noise, a loose shutter banging against the side of the shed. I let out a nervous laugh, feeling silly for being so scared. I secured the shutter and turned to head back to the cabin when something caught my eye. Fresh footprints in the dirt, leading away from the shed and into the woods. Fear hit me hard. These weren't my footprints, and they looked fresh. Someone had been here. I quickly went back to the cabin, locking the door behind me. I checked all the windows, making sure they were secure. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I'd seen. Sleep was impossible. I lay on the couch, listening closely for any sounds outside. Hours passed, and eventually, exhaustion took over. I drifted off, holding a kitchen knife for comfort. When I woke up, sunlight was streaming through the windows. Everything seemed normal again, almost like the night before had been a bad dream. I decided to pack up and head home. The uneasy feeling hadn't left me, and I didn't want to stay another night. As I loaded my car, I noticed something that sent a chill down my spine. On the ground, right where my car had been parked, was a small, folded piece of paper. I picked it up and unfolded it. The note was simple, written in neat, careful handwriting. Next time, you won't be alone. I drove away, my heart racing, and I never went back to that cabin again. It stood as a reminder that sometimes, the scariest things aren't ghosts or monsters but the unsettling unknowns that linger in the shadows of our everyday lives. I couldn't shake the feeling that whoever left that note was still out there, waiting. A week alone in a cabin sounded like the perfect break from my busy city life. When I finally got there, the place was everything I'd hoped for, far away from everything, surrounded by thick woods and right next to a clear lake. The first few days were perfect. I spent my time reading on the porch, walking through the forest, and swimming in the lake. The air was fresh, and the only sounds were the leaves rustling and birds singing now and then. By the third night, I felt totally relaxed, falling asleep to the soft sounds of nature. But on the fourth day, things started to change. It was small stuff at first. I noticed strange things around the cabin, little changes that could be missed easily. The kitchen window, which I was sure I'd closed, was slightly open. Some utensils seemed to have moved on the counter. I told myself I was just imagining things. That evening, while sitting on the porch, the air felt weird. The birds had stopped singing, and the usual forest sounds were gone. I tried to shake off the creepy feeling and went inside, locking the door behind me. As I made dinner, 
the feeling of being watched got stronger. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was just because I was alone. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I heard faint noises outside. They were too quiet to make out but kept me awake. I told myself it was just animals, but deep down, I felt something was off. I finally fell into a restless sleep, only to wake up suddenly to a loud bang. My heart raced as I lay there in the dark, listening. The sound had come from the kitchen. Grabbing a flashlight, I slowly made my way toward the noise. The kitchen was empty, but the back door was wide open. Panic hit me. I locked the door and searched the cabin, finding nothing out of place. But the feeling of unease was overwhelming. The next morning, I decided to end my trip early. I packed up my things quickly, desperate to get back to the city. As I loaded the car, I found footprints in the mud near the cabin. They were fresh and definitely not mine. My heart pounded as I realized someone had been lurking around. I drove away as fast as I could, my eyes constantly checking the rearview mirror. When I reached the main road, I felt a bit of relief. The cabin, which had seemed so peaceful, had become a place of fear. Back in the city, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It took weeks before I felt safe in my own home again. The trip that was supposed to be a relaxing getaway had turned into a nightmare. But it made me realize something scary. Sometimes, the most terrifying things aren't ghosts or monsters. They're the real dangers that hide in the shadows of our everyday lives, waiting for us to let our guard down. And the worst part is, even when you leave the cabin, those shadows can follow you. Even now, as I write this, I sometimes feel like someone's still out there, watching, waiting. I decided to spend the weekend alone at a small cabin in the woods. I wanted to get away from the city noise and relax. It was early fall, and the leaves were turning red and orange. The air was cool, and I felt excited about the peace and quiet. The cabin was simple, with one bedroom, a small kitchen, and a cozy living room with a fireplace. It was near a quiet lake, surrounded by tall trees. As soon as I arrived, I unpacked my bags and set up my things. By the time I was done, it was late afternoon. The sun was setting, and long shadows were stretching through the trees. I decided to take a short walk before it got too dark. I followed a narrow path that wound through the woods and led to a clearing with a great view of the lake. The water was calm, and everything seemed peaceful. I took a deep breath, enjoying the fresh air. It was the perfect start to my weekend. On my way back to the cabin, I noticed something strange. There were footprints on the path that weren't mine. They looked fresh and were going the same way as me. I felt a little uneasy but shrugged it off, thinking they were probably from a hiker earlier in the day. Still, the thought stuck in my mind. Back at the cabin, I locked the door and lit a fire. I made a simple dinner and ate while watching the flames dance. As the night got darker, the sounds of the forest got louder. I could hear the rustling of leaves and the occasional snap of a twig. I told myself it was just animals moving around. Before going to bed, I checked that all the doors and windows were locked. I climbed into bed and pulled the covers up, feeling a bit on edge but trying to relax. Sleep came slowly, and when it did, it was restless. Sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up suddenly. My heart was pounding, and I wasn't sure why. I listened carefully and heard a faint scratching noise coming from the kitchen. It sounded like something or someone was trying to get in. My mind raced with thoughts. Maybe it was just a raccoon, but the footsteps I saw earlier flashed in my mind. I got up as quietly as I could and grabbed the flashlight I had brought with me. Slowly, I made my way to the kitchen. The scratching had stopped but I could feel my pulse in my ears. When I reached the kitchen, I shined the flashlight around. Everything looked normal, and all the windows were still locked. I sighed with relief, convincing myself it was probably just my imagination. Just as I turned to head back to bed, I heard a loud crash outside. It sounded like something heavy had fallen. My hands were shaking as I approached the window. I hesitated before looking out. 
The moonlight lit up the front yard, and there, near the edge of the woods, I saw a figure standing. It was too dark to make out any details, but the shape was clear. Someone was there. Panic surged through me. I quickly backed away from the window and grabbed my phone. There was no signal, of course. My only option was to wait it out until morning. I barricaded myself in the bedroom, pushing the dresser against the door. I sat on the bed, flashlight in hand, eyes fixed on the door, and waited. The hours dragged by, each sound amplified in the darkness. Finally, as the first light of dawn broke through the curtains, I felt a wave of relief. I carefully moved the dresser and opened the door, inching my way to the front of the cabin. The figure was gone, but near the spot where it had stood, I found a large, jagged rock covered in dirt, as if it had been used to try to break in. I packed my things quickly and left the cabin, my heart still racing. As I drove away, the feeling of unease slowly lifted. I realized how close I had come to danger and how lucky I was to have escaped unharmed. Back in the city, the experience stuck with me. It reminded me how vulnerable we can be and how quickly a peaceful retreat can turn into a nightmare. From then on, I was much more careful about where I chose to get away. Weeks passed, and life returned to normal. But sometimes, late at night, I'd wake up with my heart pounding, the memory of that night fresh in my mind. And one evening, as I settled into bed, my phone buzzed with a message from an unknown number. It simply read, See you soon. The unease I felt that night came rushing back, stronger than ever. The safety of home no longer felt guaranteed, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was still being watched. The sky was a dull gray, and a cold wind blew through the trees as I started on the trail. I had planned this hike for weeks, eager to get away from the noise of the city. The path was narrow and twisted through the thick forest. I felt a sense of peace as I walked, the only sound being my boots crunching on the gravel. After about an hour, I noticed the trail starting to climb sharply. The trees were thicker here, their branches interlocking to form a canopy that blocked most of the light. I checked my map and compass, making sure I was still on the right path. But something felt off. The forest was too quiet. No birds, no rustling leaves, just silence. As I climbed higher, the path became rough, covered with rocks and fallen branches. I stumbled a few times, catching myself on tree trunks. The air grew colder, and an uneasy feeling settled over me. I pushed on, determined to reach the top. Then I saw it, a small, old sign pointing to a split in the trail. The left path looked well used but the right was overgrown, almost hidden by bushes. My map didn't show this fork, but my curiosity got the better of me. I chose the right path, hoping it might be a shortcut or an old, forgotten trail. The path quickly became hard to follow. I had to push through thick bushes, the branches scratching my arms and face. The ground was uneven, and I slipped several times, my heart pounding each time I went down. I was deep in the forest now, the light fading more. I began to doubt my choice. Suddenly, the ground gave way beneath my feet. I tumbled down a steep slope, rocks and branches tearing at my clothes and skin. I landed hard at the bottom, pain shooting through my leg. I tried to stand, but my ankle gave out under me. I realized with a sinking feeling that it was sprained, maybe even broken. Panic set in. I was alone, hurt, and far from the main trail. I took a deep breath, trying to calm myself. I had to think clearly. I checked my backpack and found my emergency kit. I splinted my ankle as best I could and took stock of my situation. I had water, a little food, and my phone, but no signal. I decided to rest for a while, hoping to regain some strength. I knew I couldn't stay here. I had to find my way back to the main trail. Using a sturdy branch as a crutch, I began to hobble back up the slope. Every step was agony, but I forced myself to keep moving. Hours passed, or maybe it was just minutes, it was hard to tell. The sky above was getting darker, the forest colder. I felt despair creeping in, but I pushed it back. I had to stay focused. 
Finally, I reached the top of the slope. I looked around, disoriented, but then I saw it, a flash of color through the trees. The trail marker. Relief washed over me. I made my way toward it, moving as quickly as my injured leg would allow. When I reached the trail, I almost cried with relief. I was back on the main path. I still had a long way to go, but now I had a direction, a way out. I walked for hours, each step a painful reminder of my fall, but eventually, the trees began to thin. I heard the distant hum of cars, the sounds of civilization. When I finally emerged from the forest, I was exhausted, every part of my body aching, but I was safe. A passing hiker saw me and helped me to the nearest ranger station. They called for help, and soon I was on my way to the hospital. As I lay in the back of the ambulance, I felt a mix of pain and relief. I had made it out, and despite everything, I was alive. The forest had tested me, but I had survived. But as I lay there, I couldn't shake a feeling of dread. That silence in the forest, the way the ground gave way so suddenly— it felt almost deliberate, as if the forest itself had tried to keep me. I remembered the small sign pointing to the overgrown path, the one that wasn't on my map. What if it was there for a reason? What if I wasn't the first one to go that way? And what if the forest had claimed others before me? As the ambulance sped away, the trees lining the road seemed to close in, their branches reaching out like grasping fingers. I couldn't help but wonder if I had truly escaped or if the forest was merely letting me go, waiting for the next hiker to make the same mistake I did. I had been planning this hike for weeks. I needed a break from the stress of work and city life. I packed my backpack with water, snacks, a first aid kit, and a map of the trail. The weather was perfect, clear skies and a cool breeze. I set out early in the morning, excited to spend the day in nature. The trail started out easy, gently sloping through thick forest. The sounds of birds and rustling leaves were soothing. After about an hour, the path began to narrow and the trees grew thicker. I could hear the faint sound of a stream somewhere ahead. I followed the sound, hoping to refill my water bottle. As I got closer, the ground became muddy and slippery. I nearly fell several times, but I kept going. The stream was a welcome sight, and I took a break to rest and drink some water. The water was cold and refreshing. I checked my map and decided to take a less traveled path that looped back to the main trail. It looked like it would add an extra hour to my hike, but I was up for the challenge. The path was overgrown, and I had to push through bushes and step over fallen branches. After a while, I noticed the forest growing darker and quieter. The sun was still high, but the thick tree cover blocked out most of the light. Suddenly, I realized I hadn't seen any trail markers in a while. I pulled out my map and compass, trying to figure out where I was. I should have been able to see a large rock noted on the map, but there was nothing in sight. I started to feel uneasy. I was lost. I decided to go back the way I came hoping to find the main trail again. As I turned around, I heard a rustling in the bushes behind me. My heart pounded as I looked around. There was no one there. I started walking faster, trying to stay calm. Every little sound seemed louder in the quiet forest. My footsteps, the crunch of leaves, the distant call of a bird, it all felt like it was closing in on me. After what felt like hours, I stumbled back onto the main trail. I was so relieved, but I knew I still had a long way to go. The sun was starting to set, casting long shadows across the path. I walked faster, determined to get out of the forest before dark. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every so often, I looked over my shoulder, half expecting to see someone, or something, following me. But the trail remained empty. I kept going, focused on getting back to the safety of my car. Finally, I saw the trailhead in the distance. The sight of my car parked at the edge of the forest was the most beautiful thing I'd seen all day. I jogged the last few hundred yards, feeling the tension in my body start to go away. When I reached my car, I took a moment to catch my breath and think about the day. 
It had been a lot more intense than I had expected, but I was proud of myself for staying calm and finding my way back. I got in my car and started driving away, the forest fading in my rearview mirror. But as I drove down the road, something caught my eye. In the side mirror, I saw a figure standing at the edge of the forest, right where my car had been parked. I only saw it for a second, but it looked like a person. My heart started racing again, and I drove faster, not daring to look back. The hike had been scary, and I had faced my fear, but the thought of that figure standing there, watching me, left me with chills. I knew I would return to the forest one day, better prepared and more careful, but the memory of that figure would always haunt me. I decided to go hiking alone one weekend in the mountains near my town. I needed to clear my head after a tough week at work. The weather was great, and the trail promised some awesome views. I packed my backpack with the basics, water, snacks, a map, and my phone. I set off early in the morning, excited for some time alone in nature. The trail started easy, winding through dense forest. I listened to the birds and felt the peace of the woods. As I climbed higher, the path got steeper and rougher. I enjoyed the challenge, pushing myself to keep a steady pace. Hours went by, and I reached a clearing with an amazing view. I stopped to catch my breath and take it all in. Feeling refreshed, I kept going up the trail, but I noticed dark clouds gathering in the distance. I knew I should head back, but I really wanted to reach the top. I pushed on, telling myself I could turn around if it started to rain. The trail became narrower and harder to follow. At one point, I lost the path completely. I checked my map and compass, but the thick trees made it tough to figure out where I was. The wind picked up, and I felt the first drops of rain. I started to get worried. I decided to head back, but in my hurry, I stumbled and twisted my ankle. Pain shot through my leg and I struggled to stand panic hit me. I was alone, hurt, and a storm was coming. I tried to call for help, but there was no signal. I cursed myself for not turning back earlier. I hobbled along, each step agonizing. The rain was pouring now, and the trail turned into mud. I slipped and fell, my hands sinking into the cold, wet earth. I forced myself to stay calm. I had to keep moving, I found a stick to use as a crutch and limped forward. It felt like hours passed, though it was probably much less. Just when I thought I couldn't go any further, I heard voices. I shouted, desperate for help. Moments later, two hikers appeared, their faces full of concern. They helped me to their campsite and gave me dry clothes and warm food. One of them wrapped my ankle, and I felt relieved. They had a satellite phone and called for a ranger. Help was on the way. As I sat by their fire, grateful for their kindness, I realized how close I had come to real danger. The ranger arrived and helped me down the mountain. Safe at last, I promised myself never to take such risks again. The mountains would always be there, but I had learned the hard way that I needed to respect their power and unpredictability. I made it home safely, but the memory of that day haunted me. As my ankle healed, I kept replaying the events in my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me in those woods, something I couldn't see. Even now, when I hike with friends, I catch myself glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see a shadow moving in the trees. The mountains had left a mark on me, a reminder of how small and vulnerable I really am. But sometimes, late at night, when I'm alone in my room, I hear faint whispers in the wind and I can't shake the feeling that something followed me home from those mountains. I was hiking alone in the forest, trying to find some peace and quiet away from the city. The thick trees and the rustling of leaves underfoot were calming, but as the sun began to set, things started to change. The light coming through the trees dimmed, and shadows grew longer and darker. I realized I had gone deeper into the forest than I meant to. The trail I was following became harder to see.
panic began to set in as I tried to remember if I had taken the right turns. The air felt colder, and the sounds of the forest seemed to get louder and scarier. I walked faster, hoping to find my way back before it got completely dark. Minutes felt like hours. Every direction looked the same, and I couldn't tell which way was which. I started to hear faint noises, branches snapping, leaves crunching, as if something or someone was following me. My heartbeat pounded in my ears. I didn't want to look back, scared of what I might see. Tripping over roots and rocks, I tried to stay calm. The logical part of my mind told me it was just animals, but fear took over. My flashlight was my only guide, but its light seemed too weak to cut through the thick darkness. I regretted not bringing more supplies or telling anyone where I was going. Suddenly, the ground beneath me gave way. I fell down a steep slope, rolling through bushes, hitting rocks and branches. Pain shot through my body as I finally stopped at the bottom. I lay there, disoriented and hurting, trying to catch my breath. As I looked up, I noticed a faint glow through the trees. Gathering my strength, I dragged myself toward the light. As I got closer, I realized it was a small, old cabin with a warm glow coming from its windows. Relief washed over me. I knocked on the door, hoping someone would answer, but there was no response. The door creaked open with a push, revealing a cozy interior, lit by a single lantern. There was a note on the table. It was from a forest ranger, explaining that this was a shelter for lost hikers, equipped with basic supplies and a radio to call for help. My hands shook as I used the radio to contact the rangers, and they assured me that they would send someone to find me at first light. Exhausted, I lay down on the small cot, feeling a mix of relief and disbelief. The fear and panic of the night slowly faded as I realized I was safe. The forest outside no longer felt like a scary trap but a wild, unpredictable place that I had somehow survived. As I began to drift off to sleep, I heard a faint, rhythmic tapping on the window. My heart raced, and I sat up, staring at the dark glass. The tapping continued, slow and deliberate. Gathering all my courage, I crept to the window and peered outside, but saw nothing but darkness. I told myself it was just a branch in the wind and lay back down, trying to ignore the noise. Just as I was about to fall asleep again, I felt a cold draft and the unmistakable sensation of being watched. I opened my eyes to see a shadow moving across the room, but when I looked again, it was gone. The tapping had stopped, replaced by an eerie silence. I lay there, wide awake and terrified, realizing that maybe I wasn't as alone as I thought. The forest, with all its unknowns, had let me go, but it felt like something had followed me to this supposed safe haven. The night stretched on, filled with sounds I couldn't explain and a growing fear that wouldn't let me rest. I had been looking forward to a quiet weekend alone in a cabin I found online. It was deep in the woods, far from the noise and stress of the city. The pictures showed a cozy place with a small porch and a view of the lake. It seemed perfect. I arrived in the late afternoon, just as the sun was starting to set. The drive had been long, and the last part was a narrow dirt road that twisted through thick trees. The cabin looked just like the photos, maybe even better in person. I unloaded my bag and went inside, eager to relax. The first night was quiet. I made myself a simple dinner, read for a while, and went to bed early. The sounds of the forest were calming, and I fell asleep quickly. The next day, I decided to explore the area. I walked around the lake, took some photos, and enjoyed the fresh air. It was nice to disconnect from everything. When I got back to the cabin in the late afternoon, I noticed something strange. The front door was slightly open. I was sure I had closed it when I left. I felt a bit uneasy but told myself it was nothing. Maybe I hadn't shut it properly. That night, I had trouble sleeping. I kept hearing faint noises outside, like twigs snapping and leaves rustling. I tried to brush it off as animals, but the sounds seemed too regular, like someone was walking around the cabin. I lay awake, listening until I finally fell asleep in the early hours of the morning. The next day, I was on edge. 
I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I decided to stay close to the cabin. While making lunch, I noticed footprints in the dirt outside the kitchen window. They were fresh and definitely not mine. My heart started to race. I felt exposed and vulnerable. That evening, I tried to call a friend, but there was no cell service. I thought about driving back to town, but it was already getting dark, and the road was tricky even in daylight. I decided to stay one more night and leave first thing in the morning. I locked all the doors and windows and found an old baseball bat in the closet, just in case. As the night grew darker, the noises started again. This time, they were louder and closer. I could hear footsteps on the porch, the sound of someone trying the door handle. My pulse quickened, and I clutched the bat tightly. The door rattled, but it held firm. After a few tense moments, the noises stopped, and everything went silent again. I didn't sleep at all. At the crack of dawn, I packed my things and hurried to the car. The feeling of being watched was overwhelming. I threw my bag in the trunk and jumped into the driver's seat. As I drove away, I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw a figure standing at the edge of the trees, watching me leave. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town. I found a cafe with Wi-Fi and called a friend to let them know what happened. I never reported it to the police, but I left a review warning others about my experience. Looking back, I realized how lucky I was to leave unharmed. That weekend was supposed to be a break from everything, but it turned into a nightmare. I learned to trust my instincts and be more careful about where I choose to stay. Next time, I'll make sure there's a town nearby and people around. The cabin might have been beautiful, but no view is worth feeling unsafe. Months later, I was scrolling through an online forum about strange experiences in remote places when I came across a post that stopped me cold. It was from someone who had stayed in the same cabin. They described the same noises, the same feeling of being watched. But their story ended differently. They woke up one night to find muddy footprints leading from the front door to the foot of their bed. It made my blood run cold. I wasn't just being watched. I had been inches away from whoever, or whatever, was out there. The realization hit me hard, and I haven't been able to shake it since. Now, even in the safety of my home, I sometimes wake up in the middle of the night, heart pounding, convinced that I'm not alone. I had always wanted to get away from the city for a while, to escape the noise and stress. A friend had told me about a cabin deep in the woods, far from any towns or highways. It sounded perfect. I packed up my car and headed out, looking forward to a week of peace and quiet. The drive was long, and the roads got narrower and bumpier the further I went. Finally, I reached the cabin. It was small and old-looking, with a porch overlooking a dense forest. The sun was setting as I unpacked, casting an orange glow through the trees. The first night was peaceful. I sat on the porch, listening to the sounds of the forest, feeling more relaxed than I had in months. But things started to change the next day. I spent the day hiking and exploring the area. When I returned to the cabin, I noticed the front door was slightly open. I was sure I had closed it when I left. I stepped inside feeling a chill that had nothing to do with the cool evening air. Everything seemed to be in place, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. That night, I woke up to a strange noise outside. It sounded like someone or something moving through the bushes. I told myself it was just an animal, but I couldn't go back to sleep. The noise continued for what felt like hours, stopping just before dawn. The next day, I found footprints around the cabin. They were too large to be from any animal I knew of. I felt a growing sense of unease but tried to convince myself it was nothing. Maybe some other camper had wandered by. The following night, the noises were louder and closer. I stayed up, sitting in the dark, my ears straining to catch every sound. At one point, I thought I saw a shadow move past the window. I grabbed a kitchen knife and waited, heart pounding. The shadow didn't return, but I barely slept. By the fourth day, I was exhausted and on edge. The cabin, 
which had seemed so inviting, now felt like a trap. I decided to leave the next morning. That night, the noises started again, but this time they were accompanied by a faint knocking on the door. I froze, holding my breath, listening. The knocking continued, slow and deliberate. I couldn't bring myself to open the door. I sat there, clutching the knife, until the knocking finally stopped. I didn't sleep at all. At first light, I packed up my things and got into my car. The forest, which had seemed so peaceful, now felt oppressive. I drove away, the cabin disappearing into the trees behind me. As I got back onto the main road, I felt the tension in my shoulders start to ease. I never found out who or what was outside the cabin those nights. It could have been a prank or someone living off the grid, but I didn't care to find out. I was just grateful to be heading back to civilization. The week in the woods had shown me that sometimes, solitude isn't as peaceful as it seems. A few days later, I was back in the city, trying to put the experience behind me. One evening, as I was settling in for the night, I heard a faint, slow knocking on my apartment door. My heart sank, and I froze, just like I had in that cabin. The city noise buzzed around me, but all I could hear was that knocking, slow and deliberate, just like before. I had been waiting for this weekend for months. A few days away from the city, in a cabin deep in the woods, sounded like the perfect escape. The drive up was smooth, and I got there just as the sun was setting. The cabin was cozy, with a small kitchen, a fireplace, and one bedroom. I quickly unpacked, made myself a simple dinner, and settled in for the night. While I was reading a book, I heard a strange sound from outside. At first, I thought it was the wind or some animal, but it kept going. It was a low, steady thumping, like someone knocking on a door far away. I got up and checked the windows and doors, but everything was locked. I told myself it was just my imagination and went to bed. The next morning, I woke up early and decided to go for a hike. The forest was beautiful and quiet, with the sounds of birds and the rustling of leaves. I followed a trail that went around a small lake. The air was fresh, and I felt full of energy. As I returned to the cabin, I noticed something weird. The front door was slightly open. I was sure I had locked it before I left. I walked in carefully, my heart racing. Everything seemed normal at first, but then I saw it. In the middle of the living room floor was a single muddy footprint. It was too big to be mine. Panic started to set in. I checked the cabin again, very carefully this time, but found nothing else out of place. I spent the rest of the day on edge, constantly looking over my shoulder. That night, the thumping came back. Louder and more intense. I could feel the vibrations through the floor. I tried to ignore it, but it was impossible. I grabbed a flashlight and decided to see what was causing it. As I stepped outside, the noise stopped. I shined the light around but saw nothing. Feeling foolish, I went back inside and locked the door. Sleep was hard to come by, and when I did finally fall asleep, my dreams were filled with shadows and whispers. I woke up in a cold sweat, convinced someone had been watching me. The sun was just beginning to rise, and I decided I had had enough. I packed my things quickly, desperate to leave this creepy place. As I was loading the car, I heard footsteps behind me. I spun around, my heart in my throat. A man stood there, looking dirty and wild-eyed. He said nothing, just stared at me with an intensity that made my skin crawl. I quickly got into the car and locked the doors. He didn't move, just watched as I started the engine and drove away. My hands were shaking as I drove back to the city. When I finally reached the highway, I felt a bit of relief. I never looked back. The man, the noises, the footprint, all of it seemed like a bad dream. I found out later that the cabin was sold a few months after I left. I never learned who that man was or why he was there. But a part of me knew that whatever it was, it wasn't over. Sometimes, the most peaceful places hide the darkest secrets. I still see that man's eyes in my nightmares, 
and I can't shake the feeling that he is still out there, waiting for his next visitor. The thought keeps me awake at night, wondering what might have happened if I had stayed one more night in that cabin. I walked into the forest feeling calm. The sun was setting, casting long shadows between the trees. I needed some time alone, away from the noise of the city and the stress of daily life. The air was fresh and cool, smelling of pine and earth. The path under my feet was narrow, barely more than a trail, but I felt sure of myself. I had been here before. As I went deeper, the trees grew closer together. The light faded faster than I expected and soon I was surrounded by darkness. I reached for my phone to check the time and realized I had no signal. I felt a bit uneasy, but I shook it off and kept walking. The forest was quiet, too quiet. No birds, no rustling leaves, just the sound of my footsteps on the dry ground. I walked faster, hoping to reach the clearing where I could find my way back. But the path seemed to twist and turn in ways I didn't remember. It was like the forest was playing tricks on me. I stumbled over a root and fell, scraping my hands and knees. As I stood up, I noticed something that made my blood run cold. There were footprints on the path that weren't mine. They were fresh, leading deeper into the forest. I hesitated, feeling a chill run down my spine. My mind raced with thoughts of who else could be out here. The sun was gone now, and the forest was pitch black. I knew I needed to find my way back. I turned around and started retracing my steps, but everything looked the same. Panic set in. I forced myself to stay calm, focusing on my breathing and moving steadily. After what felt like hours, I saw a faint light ahead. Relief washed over me, and I hurried toward it. The light led me to an old cabin, something I had never seen before. It looked abandoned, but I could see a faint glow coming from inside. I approached cautiously, peering through the broken window. Inside, a small fire burned in the fireplace, casting flickering shadows on the walls. I knocked on the door, hoping for help. No answer. I pushed the door open and stepped inside. The warmth of the fire was welcoming, and I felt a bit safer. I found a map on a dusty table, showing the layout of the forest. It was old but detailed enough to give me an idea of where I was. I studied it, tracing the path back to the main road. With the map in hand, I left the cabin and headed in the direction it showed. My steps were more confident now, and I kept my eyes on the landmarks shown on the map. The forest seemed less scary with a plan. After some time, I saw the familiar trailhead and the outline of my car in the distance. I sighed in relief, reaching my car and quickly getting inside. I locked the doors and started the engine eager to leave the forest behind. As I drove away, I looked back one last time. The cabin's light was still faintly visible, a mysterious beacon in the dark woods. But as I turned back to the road, I saw something in my rearview mirror that made my heart pound. Standing at the edge of the trees, right where I had just been, was a figure. It was too dark to see any details, but it was there, watching me. I floored the gas pedal, speeding down the road. My heart was racing, and my hands were shaking on the steering wheel. I didn't stop until I was far from the forest, the cabin, and whatever was out there. The experience stayed with me, a reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the dangers that can lurk in the shadows. I never ventured into the forest alone again. And sometimes, late at night, I still see that figure in my mind, standing at the edge of the trees, watching. Always watching. I never liked taking that shortcut through the woods. The tall trees and thick bushes always made me feel uneasy. But that evening, I was late getting home, and the dark clouds overhead made me hurry. As I walked, the wind picked up, rustling the leaves and making the branches creak in a creepy way. I pulled my jacket tighter around me and kept my eyes on the narrow dirt path. After about ten minutes, I noticed the woods were getting quieter. 
The usual sounds of birds and insects had stopped. The silence was disturbing. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. I told myself it was just my imagination, but the feeling wouldn't go away. I glanced over my shoulder, expecting to see someone or something, but there was nothing there. The path twisted and turned, and with each bend my fear grew. I tried to focus on getting to the clearing where the woods would end, and I'd be safe in the open fields. Suddenly, I heard a twig snap behind me. My heart pounded. I picked up my pace, almost breaking into a run. The footsteps behind me got faster too. Panic surged through me. My breath came in short gasps as I pushed myself to keep going. I didn't dare look back again. I knew I had to keep moving forward. The woods seemed to stretch on forever, and I felt sweat trickle down my face. Every shadow looked like a lurking figure, and the wind carried whispers that sent chills down my spine. Finally, I saw a bit of light through the trees ahead. The clearing was just up ahead. I forced myself to run faster, my legs burning with the effort. As I burst through the last line of trees, I stumbled into the open field. The sun was setting, casting a warm glow over the landscape. I bent over, hands on my knees, trying to catch my breath. I glanced back at the woods, expecting to see my pursuer emerge from the darkness. But there was no one. The path behind me was empty, the woods still and silent. The sense of relief was overwhelming. I stood up straight and took a deep breath, the cool evening air filling my lungs. I continued my walk home, the open field around me feeling like a protective barrier against the fears that had gripped me in the woods. By the time I reached my house, the last of the daylight was fading. I looked back once more at the distant tree line, the fear slowly ebbing away. As I unlocked my front door and stepped inside, I felt a strange sense of being watched again. I turned and looked out the window, back at the woods. There, just at the edge of the trees, I saw a shadowy figure standing still, almost blending with the darkness. My heart skipped a beat. I blinked, and it was gone. I closed the door quickly and locked it. The image of that figure burned into my mind. I knew I had faced my fear and made it home safely but something told me that whatever was in those woods had followed me. I wanted to spend a weekend alone in the forest to clear my mind and enjoy nature. I packed my backpack with food, water, a flashlight, and a map. Early Saturday morning, I drove to the edge of the forest, parked my car, and started my hike. The path was easy to follow, and I felt good as I walked deeper into the woods. The trees got thicker, and the sounds of the town faded away. Instead, I heard leaves rustling and birds singing far away. The sun was high in the sky, and light filtered through the leaves above. By the afternoon, I found a small open space where I decided to set up camp. I put up my tent, gathered some firewood, and sat down to enjoy the quiet around me. As the sun went down, I lit a small fire and cooked a simple meal. The night was calm, and I soon fell asleep, comforted by the sounds of the forest. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. The fire had burned down to glowing coals, and the forest was strangely quiet. I felt a weird sense of fear. I listened carefully, but there was nothing, just the silence of the night. I tried to ignore the feeling and go back to sleep. In the morning, I decided to explore more. I left my campsite and walked deeper into the forest. The trees were taller and closer together here, their branches weaving into a thick roof that blocked out much of the sunlight. The air was cooler, and the ground was covered in a thick layer of fallen leaves. As I walked, I noticed something odd. The forest seemed different, almost unfamiliar. I checked my map and compass but the path I had taken didn't match up with anything. I felt a stab of panic. I was lost. I tried to find my way back, but every direction I took seemed to lead me deeper into the woods. The trees began to look the same, each one blending into the next. My fear grew with every passing minute. The sun was now high in the sky, and I knew I had to find my way back before dark. After what felt like hours, I came upon a small stream. 
The sight of running water was a relief, and I remembered hearing that following a stream could lead to a larger river or even a way out of the forest. I decided to follow it, hoping it would guide me back to safety. I walked along the stream for what seemed like forever. The light began to fade, and I felt the familiar grip of fear tightening in my chest. But then, just as the last light of day was disappearing, I saw something ahead. A bridge. I hurried towards it, my heart pounding with relief. The bridge was old and shaky, but it was clearly used. I crossed it carefully, and on the other side I saw a dirt road. I couldn't believe my luck. I followed the road, and soon enough, I saw my car parked at the forest's edge. I reached my car just as darkness fell completely. I sat in the driver's seat for a moment, catching my breath and feeling a wave of relief wash over me. I had made it out. I started the engine and drove away, vowing never to go hiking alone in unfamiliar woods again. As I drove, I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw a figure standing at the edge of the forest, watching me. My heart skipped a beat, and I sped up, not daring to look back again. When I finally got home, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had followed me out of the woods. I locked all my doors and windows, but I still felt uneasy. I knew I would never forget the haunting silence of the forest or the figure that had watched me leave. I had been looking forward to this hike for weeks. The weather was perfect, with a clear sky and a cool breeze. The trail was known for its amazing views, winding through thick forests and along steep cliffs. I started early in the morning, feeling full of energy and ready for an adventure. As I walked, the trail got narrower and rockier. The forest got thicker, and the sounds of birds and bugs filled the air. I was deep in thought, enjoying the quiet, when I noticed the sun starting to set. I had planned to reach a small open area by dusk to set up my tent, but I was nowhere near it. Panic started to creep in. I walked faster, hoping to make up for lost time. The path twisted and turned, and soon I found myself in a part of the forest that didn't look familiar. The trees were taller, and the bushes were thicker. I realized I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. My heart pounded as I fumbled for my map, but the fading light made it hard to read. Trying to stay calm, I decided to keep moving. I hoped to find a landmark or maybe another hiker. The forest grew darker, and the temperature dropped. Every rustle of leaves and snap of a twig made me jump. I felt more and more scared as I realized how alone I was. After what felt like hours, I saw a faint light in the distance. Relieved, I made my way toward it, hoping it was a campsite or a cabin. As I got closer, I saw that it was a small, abandoned shack. The windows were broken, and the door hung loosely on its hinges. But it was shelter, and I needed to rest and think. Inside, the shack was dusty and filled with old, broken furniture. I found a spot on the floor and sat down, trying to calm my racing heart. I knew I couldn't stay there all night, but I needed to come up with a plan. I decided to wait until morning when I could see better and find my way back to the main trail. I closed my eyes and tried to rest, but every noise outside made me jump. It was a long, restless night. When the first light of dawn finally came through the broken windows, I felt a huge sense of relief. I gathered my things and got ready to leave the shack. As I stepped outside, the forest looked different in the daylight. I took a deep breath and started walking, determined to find my way back. After about an hour, I stumbled upon a familiar marker, a large, odd-shaped rock. From there, I quickly found the main trail. The relief was overwhelming. I continued hiking, more aware of my surroundings and making sure to stay on the path. By midday, I reached the clearing where I had originally planned to camp. The experience had shaken me, but it had also taught me to be more prepared and careful. As I set up my tent, I felt a sense of accomplishment. I had faced my fears and made it through a scary ordeal. The rest of the hike was uneventful, and I enjoyed the beauty of the forest with a new appreciation. Just as I was about to drift off to sleep, I heard a sound outside my tent. 
It was faint at first, like the rustling of leaves. I brushed it off as an animal. But then I heard it again, this time, closer and more deliberate, like footsteps. I lay still, my heart pounding, straining to hear. The footsteps stopped right outside my tent, and for what felt like an eternity, there was silence. Then, the zipper of my tent slowly started to open. I held my breath, too terrified to move. As the zipper opened inch by inch, I saw a hand reach inside. It was dirty, with long, unkempt nails. I couldn't see the face, but I knew I wasn't alone. My mind raced, trying to figure out what to do. The hand moved inside the tent, feeling around as if searching for something. I grabbed the nearest thing I could find, my flashlight, and swung it towards the hand. It pulled back suddenly, and I heard a low growl, almost human but not quite. I scrambled out of my tent, my heart pounding in my chest, and ran into the forest. I didn't look back. I just kept running, branches scratching my face and arms, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I don't know how long I ran, but I eventually found myself back on the main trail. Exhausted and shaking, I kept moving until I reached my car. I never went back for my tent or any of my gear. To this day, I still don't know what or who that was. All I know is that I've never felt fear like that before, and I'll never forget the feeling of that hand reaching into my tent. I remember that summer when I decided to take a trip by myself to a cabin in the woods. I needed to clear my head and thought some time alone would help. I found a cabin online, deep in the forest, miles away from the nearest town. The place looked perfect, quiet, surrounded by trees, and most importantly, isolated. The drive was long and winding, but I finally arrived in the late afternoon. The cabin looked even more charming in person. It was small but cozy, with a wooden porch and a view of the thick woods. After unpacking my things, I decided to explore the area a bit before it got dark. I walked through the woods, breathing in the fresh air and listening to the sounds of nature. It was peaceful. But as I walked further, I noticed something strange. The forest became very quiet, and I had this weird feeling like someone was watching me. I told myself I was just being silly and headed back to the cabin. That night, I had trouble sleeping. I kept hearing noises outside, twigs snapping, leaves rustling, and what sounded like footsteps. I told myself it was just animals. Still, I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling. Eventually, I fell into a light sleep. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. The cabin was pitch black. I reached for my flashlight and shone it around the room. Nothing seemed out of place, but the feeling of being watched was stronger than ever. I decided to check the windows and doors. Everything was locked tight. The next day, I tried to relax. I read a book, made some coffee, and sat on the porch. But the feeling of unease wouldn't go away. I decided to go for another walk, hoping it would clear my mind. This time, I took a different path and stumbled upon an old, abandoned campsite. It looked like it hadn't been used in years. There were remnants of a fire pit and some rusted camping gear. The sight of it gave me chills. I hurried back to the cabin. That night, the noises started again. This time, they were louder and closer. My heart raced as I listened to the sounds of someone, or something, moving around outside. I grabbed the flashlight and my phone, but there was no signal to call for help. I felt trapped. Suddenly, I heard a loud bang on the porch. My blood ran cold. I shone the flashlight towards the door, but all I saw was darkness. The banging continued, getting more aggressive. I had to do something. I decided to face whatever was out there. I grabbed a heavy flashlight as a makeshift weapon and slowly opened the door. To my shock, there was no one there. The porch was empty, but the feeling of being watched was overwhelming. I stepped outside and shone the light around. The woods were silent again. I stood there, heart pounding, trying to make sense of what was happening. Then I saw it, movement in the trees. I aimed the flashlight, but it only caught glimpses of shadows. I couldn't stay there any longer. I grabbed my essentials and jumped into my car. 
As I sped away, I looked back at the cabin, now just a dark silhouette against the forest. Relief washed over me as I reached the main road. I didn't stop until I was back in town, where the familiar sounds of people and cars made me feel safe again. Later, I found out that the area around the cabin had a history of strange occurrences. People had reported feeling watched and hearing unexplainable noises, but nothing harmful had ever happened. It seemed like the forest itself had a presence that unsettled visitors. I never went back to that cabin. The experience left me shaken. But sometimes, late at night when I'm lying in bed, I still hear the rustling of leaves and the faint sound of footsteps. And I wonder if something followed me back from those woods. When I decided to spend a weekend alone at the cabin, I thought it would be a great way to relax. It was a small place, hidden in the woods about three hours from the city. The drive was calm. I had the radio on, windows down, and I felt at ease. When I arrived, I took a deep breath of the fresh, pine-scented air. The first day was perfect. I walked a bit, read a book, and made a simple dinner. As the sun went down, the cabin felt cozy. I built a fire and settled into an old armchair, enjoying the crackling wood. By the time I went to bed, it was pitch dark outside. The cabin was silent, except for the occasional creak. I woke up in the middle of the night to a strange sound, a faint rustling coming from outside. I brushed it off as animals moving through the woods. The next morning, I found the trash can knocked over and some of my food gone. I shrugged it off and decided to be more careful about securing things at night. The day passed quietly. I explored the nearby stream and relaxed on the porch. As evening came, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I told myself it was just nerves from being alone in a new place. I locked the doors and windows and settled in for another quiet night. I woke up again early in the morning, this time to the sound of something moving around the cabin. It wasn't the same as before. It sounded intentional, like footsteps. My heart raced. I grabbed a flashlight and carefully went to the window. I looked around the yard but saw nothing. Maybe it was a deer or a raccoon, I tried to convince myself. The next day, I found footprints in the dirt outside. They were human. A chill ran down my spine. I felt exposed, vulnerable. I decided to cut my trip short. I packed my things quickly, eager to get back to the safety of the city. But when I tried to start my car, it wouldn't turn over. The battery was dead. Panic set in. I hadn't seen another person since I arrived, and there was no cell service. I decided to hike to the nearest ranger station, a few miles away. The forest felt different, more threatening. Every snap of a twig, every rustle of leaves made my nerves jump. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. After what felt like hours, I reached the ranger station. It was empty, but there was a phone. I called for help and waited. The minutes dragged by, but finally, a ranger arrived. I explained what had happened. He gave me a ride back to the cabin. We found nothing out of place except the dead car battery, which he helped jumpstart. I left the cabin quickly, not looking back. The ride home was tense. I kept glancing in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see someone following me. Back in the safety of my apartment, I tried to shake off the experience. I never found out who or what was out there, but I knew one thing for sure. I wouldn't be returning to that cabin alone again. As I lay in bed that night, I couldn't help but wonder if whoever was out there had followed me home. I listened to every creak and rustle, knowing that sometimes... Solitude isn't as peaceful as it seems. It was supposed to be a simple weekend getaway, just me and nature. I packed light and headed out for a solo camping trip. The forest was thick, but I trusted my skills. As evening drew near, I stumbled upon a rustic cabin nestled among the trees. It looked deserted, but it promised shelter from the brewing storm. Inside, the air smelled stale, 
and the silence felt heady. I tried to brush off the unease settling in as I prepared for the night. But as the wind picked up outside and the rain hammered on the roof, my nerves started to fray. Shadows danced around, toying with my senses. I twisted and turned, unable to shake the sensation of being watched. Every creak of the floorboards sent shivers down my spine. I told myself it was all in my head, that I was safe within the sturdy cabin walls. But then I heard it, a deep, menacing growl echoing from the darkness outside. Fear gripped me as I realized I wasn't alone. Frozen in place, I hardly dared to breathe as the growls grew louder, closer. Panic surged through me as I frantically searched for an escape. My heart raced as I stumbled into the night, desperate to flee whatever lurked in the shadows. Finally, I burst out of the cabin into the stormy darkness. Rain lashed against my face as I sprinted blindly through the trees, driven solely by fear and instinct. Hours passed before I stumbled onto a familiar path, leading me back to safety. Back home, I recounted my terrifying ordeal to anyone who would listen. But doubts nod at me. Was it all just my imagination? Or had something truly sinister stalked me in those woods? As time passed, I tried to forget to move on. But deep down, a chilling thought lingered. What if it wasn't just my imagination? What if there was something out there, lurking in the darkness, waiting for its next victim? The sun was setting as I made my way through the thick forest. The trail, once clear, was now hidden by heavy bushes and fallen branches. I had been hiking for hours, and my legs were beginning to ache. The map I had seemed less helpful with each passing minute, and I started to doubt my sense of direction. The air was growing colder, and the shadows stretched longer with every step. I walked faster, hoping to find the main path before dark. The rustling of leaves and the occasional snap of twigs underfoot were the only sounds that kept me company. The forest felt alive, and not in a comforting way. As the light dimmed further, I stumbled upon an old, broken-down cabin. It wasn't on the map, but I decided to check it out, hoping for some sign of people or a clue to get me back on track. The cabin's door creaked open with a push, revealing a dark inside. I fumbled for my flashlight and shone it inside. The place was empty, except for some broken furniture and scattered trash. The air was stale, and the wooden floorboards groaned under my weight. I found an old fireplace and decided to light a small fire to warm up and think. As the flames flickered to life, I felt a slight sense of relief. I dug through my backpack, pulled out a granola bar, and sat by the fire, trying to figure out my map. Just then, I heard a noise outside, soft, barely their footsteps crunching through the leaves. My heart raced as I turned off the flashlight and let the firelight be my only source of light. The footsteps grew closer, then stopped. I held my breath, listening carefully. After a few tense moments, the footsteps started again, this time moving away. I waited until the sound faded into the distance before daring to breathe normally again. I didn't know if it was an animal or another person, but I wasn't eager to find out. With the fire slowly dying, I knew I had to move. I couldn't spend the night in this cabin. Summoning my courage, I packed up and stepped outside, the darkness now complete. I picked a direction that felt right and started walking, using my flashlight sparingly to save its battery. The forest seemed to close in around me, every sound louder in the night. My senses were on high alert, and the cold air bit through my clothes. I stumbled over roots and ducked under low branches, my progress slow but steady. After what felt like forever, I spotted a faint light in the distance. Hope surged through me as I moved towards it, realizing it was the glow of a campfire. As I got closer, I saw a small group of campers. They were startled by my sudden appearance, but quickly offered help when they saw my exhausted state. They gave me food, water, and most importantly, directions to the nearest town. They even insisted I stay the night with them, offering me a spot by their fire. The warmth and company were a stark contrast to the fear and isolation I'd felt just hours before. By morning, I felt a renewed sense of strength. 
With clear directions and a few new friends, I set off again, this time with the confidence that I would make it out of the forest. As I walked, the rising sun lit up the path ahead, and I couldn't help but feel grateful. The forest that had once seemed so scary now felt almost calm in the daylight. I reached the town by midday, exhausted but safe. The experience had shaken me, but it also taught me the importance of preparation and the kindness of strangers. I vowed never to underestimate the power of nature again and to always respect the wild, unpredictable beauty of the forest. But as I lay in bed that night, safe in my own home, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The memory of those soft footsteps in the dark, the sense of something just beyond my sight, haunted me. I never knew what, or who, was out there in the forest with me. And sometimes, late at night, I could still hear those footsteps outside my window, reminding me that some things in the forest don't want to be found. I've always loved hiking alone in the woods. It gave me peace and a clear mind that I couldn't find anywhere else. One day, I decided to try a new trail I found online. It was supposed to be off the usual paths, less traveled, and surrounded by untouched nature. That sounded perfect to me. I started my hike early in the morning. The sun was just coming up, casting a golden light over everything. The trail was beautiful and for the first couple of hours, I lost myself in the steady pace of my steps and the sounds of the forest. As I went deeper, the path got narrower and harder to follow. The trees grew thicker, and the canopy above blocked out most of the sunlight. It got darker and strangely quiet. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I pushed on, eager to see where the trail would lead. After another hour, I realized I hadn't seen any trail markers for a while. Panic began to set in as I looked around and saw nothing but trees in every direction. I took out my phone to check my GPS, but there was no signal. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to find my way back, but everything looked the same. I walked for what felt like hours, trying to stay calm and focused. The forest seemed to close in on me, every rustle of leaves making me jump. I started to regret not telling anyone where I was going. Just as the sun was beginning to set, I stumbled upon a small clearing. In the middle stood an old, abandoned cabin. It looked like it had been there for decades, with vines creeping up its walls and the roof partially caved in. Desperate for shelter, I decided to take a closer look. Inside, the cabin was dark and smelled old. I found an old lantern and some matches in a drawer and managed to get a small flame going. The dim light showed a single room with a cot in one corner and a rickety table in the center. Exhausted, I lay down on the cot, hoping to rest until morning when I could figure out a way back. As I lay there, I heard a distant sound. It was faint at first, but then I recognized it. It was the sound of a search helicopter. I jumped up and ran outside, waving my arms and shouting as loud as I could. The helicopter circled above and I saw a spotlight scanning the forest. Relief washed over me as the spotlight finally found me. The helicopter hovered above, and soon, rescuers were coming down. They had been searching for me since I didn't return home on time, and my car was found parked at the trailhead. I was lifted out of the forest, cold and hungry but safe. Back home, I realized how lucky I had been. The experience taught me the importance of preparation and letting others know my plans. From then on, I never went hiking alone without a map, a compass, and always told someone where I was going. But even now, as I lay in my bed, I can't shake off the feeling of those woods. The sounds of the forest still haunt me, especially the ones I heard after the helicopter left. The distant cries and rustling that didn't quite match any animal I knew. And sometimes, just before I drift off to sleep, I swear I hear footsteps outside my window, like something followed me back from that old, abandoned cabin. It was supposed to be just another hike. The sun was shining, and the forest looked inviting as I stepped onto the trail. I had my backpack, some water, and snacks. 
The thick trees and the sound of birds chirping felt peaceful. As I walked deeper into the forest, the trail got narrower. The trees grew taller and blocked out most of the sunlight. The sounds of the forest grew quieter, too. There was an odd stillness in the air, and I started to feel uneasy. I checked my map to make sure I was on the right path, but the trees around me seemed unfamiliar. I couldn't find any of the landmarks the map showed. The trail I was on started to disappear under my feet, covered by leaves and twigs. Panic began to set in as I realized I might be lost. I decided to turn back, but every direction looked the same. I tried to stay calm, reminding myself to focus. I had read about situations like this before, stay put, conserve energy, and wait for help. But standing still felt wrong. I felt a strong urge to keep moving, to find a way out. As I walked, I noticed a faint path leading off to the side. It was almost hidden, but it seemed like my best option. I followed it hoping it would lead me back to the main trail. The path twisted and turned, and I had to duck under low branches and step over fallen logs. The light was fading, and I knew I needed to find shelter for the night. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I heard a rustling sound behind me. My heart pounded in my chest. I turned around quickly, but there was nothing there. Every shadow seemed to move, and every sound made me jump. I kept walking, faster now, almost running. Then, through the trees, I saw something that made my heart leap with hope, a cabin. It looked old and abandoned, but it was shelter. I approached it cautiously, pushed open the creaky door, and stepped inside. The cabin was empty, but it provided a sense of safety. I found some dry wood and managed to start a small fire in the fireplace. The warmth and light were comforting. I ate some of my snacks and tried to rest, but sleep wouldn't come easily. In the early hours of the morning, I heard voices and the sound of footsteps outside. Fear gripped me, but I forced myself to look out the window. To my immense relief, I saw a group of hikers with flashlights. They were calling out my name. Rescue had come. It turned out that my family had reported me missing when I didn't return. The search party had been combing the forest all night. They led me back to safety and I realized how lucky I was to have found the cabin. Back at home, I felt a mix of relief and lingering unease. The experience taught me to respect nature and always be prepared. But as I lay in my bed that night, something fell off. I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. A few days later, I was unpacking my backpack and found a small, unfamiliar object at the bottom. It was a dirty, old compass, not mine. My blood ran cold as I remembered the cabin and how it had seemed empty. Had someone left it there? Or had someone been there with me all along, watching? The thought haunted me, and as I drifted to sleep, I could swear I heard the faint rustling of leaves and the creak of a cabin door swinging open somewhere far off in the dark woods. I decided to go hiking alone one Saturday. The weather was perfect, and the trail was supposed to be easy. I packed some snacks, water, and my phone, and set off early in the morning. The forest was quiet and peaceful. Birds were singing, and the leaves were rustling in the breeze. I felt relaxed, enjoying being alone. After a couple of hours, I noticed the path was getting narrower. I hadn't seen another hiker in a while. The trees were getting closer together, and it was getting darker. I didn't worry about it and kept walking, thinking the trail would get wider again soon. But it didn't. Instead, I found an old, overgrown path that looked like a shortcut. I decided to take it, thinking it might save me some time. As I walked, the forest grew eerily quiet. The air felt heavy, and I started to feel uneasy. I checked my phone for the time and noticed I had no signal. I kept going, hoping the path would lead me back to the main trail. Suddenly, I tripped over a root and fell hard, scraping my hands and knees. As I got up, I realized my water bottle had rolled away, lost in the bushes. Ignoring the pain, I kept walking. After what felt like forever, I came to a small clearing. In the middle, there was an old, broken-down cabin. 
It looked like no one had lived there for years. Even though I felt scared, I went up to it, hoping to find some help or a map. The door creaked open with a little push. Inside, the air was stale, and the floor creaked under my feet. Dust covered everything. I found an old, moldy map on a table, but it was too faded to read. I decided to leave and find my way back on my own. Just as I turned to go, I heard a soft rustling behind me. My heart pounded, but I didn't see anything. I quickly left the cabin and started running back the way I came. As I ran, the forest seemed to close in around me. Every shadow looked like a person, every sound felt like footsteps behind me. My mind was racing with fear. I had to get out. I didn't want to be trapped here as night fell. Finally, after what felt like hours of running and stumbling, I burst out onto the main trail. Relief washed over me as I saw other hikers in the distance. I made my way to them, exhausted and shaken, but grateful to be out of the woods. When I reached my car, I sat for a moment, catching my breath. The forest no longer felt inviting. I had learned my lesson about straying from the path and hiking alone without proper preparation. As I started the car, I glanced back at the trailhead, the trees dark and foreboding in the fading light. Just as I was about to drive away, I saw a figure standing at the edge of the forest, barely visible. It didn't move, just stood there watching me. My heart skipped a beat, and I quickly drove away, not daring to look back again. That night, as I tried to sleep, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was out there, watching and waiting. I promised myself I'd always hike with a buddy and stick to marked trails. But no matter how safe I tried to be, I couldn't forget the figure at the edge of the forest, and I couldn't help but wonder if it had followed me home.